Yo, what up? Be back with another edition of CT's RPT. Real Prison Talk with Wes. And I was on the website today. I'm always on some sort of prison website. And today I was on a site called theatlantic.com. And they had a health article titled, Prison Food is Making U.S. Inmates Disproportionately Sick. Now, the title had caught my attention because I remember the first time I had got labeled a uh, uh, SRG uh, security risk group member. And uh, when I was in, I got sent to the gang block. And when I was there, I was in a cell with this older kid. I'm trying to think of his name. Dang, I can't remember his name. That's sad, he was, because he was my boy too. But anyway, he was he was banging something called ECB uh Elm City Boys and that was like some old school gang out of New Haven. But the kid had done a ten year bid and he was telling me how everybody he knew well, he said everybody he knew, he probably was exaggerating, but I believe the majority of the people that he knew that had done 10 years or better or basically big bids or had either cancer or some form of health issues. So at the time, I was kind of attributing it to the fact that dudes in prison have a lot of unorthodox ways of doing things. And health-wise, they may not be the best choices. Because you got your brothers cook and eat with plastic bags or aluminum lining from potato chip uh, bags. Uh, you got guys putting plastic bags all over their body to work out with. So, at the time he was telling me this, I was like, well... Maybe his friend's sickness was due to their jail lifestyle, you know? And the fact that they've been subjected to that for so many years, it started to take a toll. But now here we are nearly 10 years later, and I'm online seeing them talk about unhealthy and unsanitary jail food and how bad it really is. And they said that um, the the Detroit Free Press had reported that a kitchen worker was fired for refusing to serve rotten potatoes. So now as I'm reading these articles, I'm like, like a, a few of them are jumping out to me because I had relatable situations, you know. I was working as a food server when I was in McDougal. I was working with uh, my boy. Uh, shout out to my boy Fifth, man. Lil Diesel Fifth from, from Hartford. He was a food server with me. And he actually used to work in the kitchen. And he had got fired because I can't remember the exact, because I haven't been around, like, we left each other maybe a couple years ago. So I can't remember the exact story he was telling me, what the exact food was. But I know that it was not good. It was, like, rotten or spoiled or something. So when he told the supervisor, like, yo, I'm not, I'm not serving that, they fired him for that. Not to mention, there was another time, there was a Spanish dude that was actually the full server before I became a full server. I actually got his job because he kind of, he refused to, um, they wanted him to line the table up with cups of juice. We give, as a full server, we give little plastic cups of juice. They wanted him to prepare the juice before the inmates came and got it. This was because, you know, inmates, we we tend to take advantage of things and what had started 
occurring was what we used to do, the way we originally did it. We would start, we would stand at the whatever the jug is where all the juice is at, and we would make the cups as the inmates are coming. But inmates start coming out with their own cups now. And it was getting out of hand because we give you like one little plastic cup of juice, which I frowned upon because I'm like, grown man, it needs more than one little cup of juice or something that I would give one of my kids. But now you got inmates coming out with big, huge jugs and they want you to fill them up. And then they're coming out with two and three of them. They want two and three of these big, huge jugs filling up. And... Originally, I'm like, I feel like it's not mine, so, hey, give it all away. I don't care. I would rather have the jug empty so that it's not as heavy when it's time for me to clean up and take it away. But what started happening was when we feed the, the block one tier at a time, it's two tiers. So when one tier comes out and they bring in all these huge jugs and Everybody wants two and three of these big, big, huge cups of water, uh, juice. By the time the next tier come, there wouldn't be enough for everybody to get juice. And then you got dudes starting to complain. You got dudes going back to the cops. Like, oh, I didn't get no juice. Food service didn't save me no juice. How did we didn't get no juice when the kitchen sends enough juice for everybody? So I guess what they told the dude was no more giving inmates juice when they come to the line. We want you to... Set up the table with a bunch of cups of juice. And as they grab their food on one table, they'll come and grab a cup from this table. Now, the problem with that was where we served the food at, there was a vent directly over our head. So the vent is blowing out dust. So when he set the juice up, the dust will blow right in the cups of juice. So he tells the officer in the block, like, yo, I'm not going to do it like that because the vent above our head blows dust into the juice. The officer didn't care. So he was like, listen, do it the way I said or go lock up. And the kid stood by what he believed. And he was like, I'm not serving the juice like that. I wouldn't want nobody to give it to me. And he went and locked up, you know. The scary thing is you don't have that many noble people like that. The average scumbag, because there's a lot of scumbags in jail. Everybody ain't good guys in jail. You run across one good guy for every scumbag, for every dirt bag, for every creep. So the average creep is like, well, as long as my juice ain't on this table, I don't really care about the rest of you. Okay, officer, you want me to do it like that? I'll do it like that. They don't really care. The officer don't care because they don't have to drink it. And then the, in, the inmate, they don't care because they ain't drinking it either. Because they, as a food server, you get to make your own juice and make your own food or whatever. So, the scary part is you got a lot of inmates that would listen to the officers and serve us rotten food. Juice with stuff that don't flow in it. Uh, on top of the fact that you got a lot of bad stuff going on in jail already. Like, I had a homie that had glass in his food. And I don't know if that was revenge for a beef that he had, you know what I mean? Or if that was just a mistake in the kitchen where something, a piece of glass broke or something. And it was, they cooked big, huge pots for the whole jail, you know what I mean? Something broke and they just stirring and stirring and call themselves picking it out instead of throwing that whole pot of uh, food out. Because they don't want to get in trouble for breaking the glass. Or I don't know what the hell happened, but I know that the kid was eating and the kid started spitting up blood. Um, I, I can't remember. There was, I think it was the National USA, USA Today on the same website. They was talking about how USA Today had reported nightmarish stories about maggots. And I'm reading all these stories and I'm like, yo, this is whatever jail they're talking about. This is, I've really lived this like. Just the jail that I just left. I was in Carl Robinson. I, my level had dropped my first time being in a medium. I just made parole from a medium. And one of my hustles was I used to sell 
what they call jailhouse s'mores. In another episode, I'm going to explain to y'all what jailhouse s'mores is. But one of the ingredients in my jailhouse s'mores was a cereal bar. And I remember my little homie YG coming up to me one day. And he said, Wes, don't buy no more cereal bars. And I'm like, the cereal bar is one of the small keys to my success. You know what I mean? It's cheap. It can get split into multiple s'mores. What do you mean don't buy no more cereal bars? And he told me like, yo, I just bought the cereal bars from commissary. I opened it up and had maggots in it. I didn't want to. He tried to show me the candy bar. I didn't want to see it. it just the, the thought of it made me sick to my stomach. And I said, oh my God. I can't put this in my s'mores. I'm trying to make money. I'm trying to... This is a business. I'm trying to make money off of these jailhouse s'mores. Can't have maggots in them. And they actually... I guess the, the problem got big. He wasn't the only one that had that problem. Because they actually took the cereal bars off the commissary for a little bit. Like somebody complained enough or maybe it's because the CEOs used to eat commissary food too. So when we eat it, it's like we open it up, there's a maggot in it, life goes on. But God forbid once one of them open up a bag of chips or, or in his mold or the candy bar, there's maggots in it. That's when something has to be done. So I... I would probably believe that maybe an officer noticed he had maggots in it. They took it off for commissary. Put it back on later, but they took it off for the time being. And it's just sad that, I mean, you got to eat, you know? And that's why when a kid was telling me when I first got to jail, I was trying to find excuses. That's why I was looking for the the way that the, their lifestyle was. Or maybe it's the way they cook their food. They got something called stingers that they cook their food in, which is basically you baking a pot of water and you sticking electricity and salt in the water so that the water can boil, so that you can cook your food inside of a plastic bag, but you're cooking your food in electricity. Maybe that's not the most healthiest way to, to eat your food, you know? So I'm like, there's a bunch of different reasons. I didn't want to believe it was the food because I'm a greedy dude and I like to eat, you know. And, and, you know, as bad as prison food is, I don't really eat all the prison food. Like slop, I wouldn't eat the slops. But cheeseburger day, I would eat. Not only would I eat mine, I would eat other inmates. I would buy theirs. Cheeseburger go for three soups. Two soups in some jails. Bro, let me get that cheeseburger. Chicken day come, they get that big chicken. I would buy other chicken. So the last thing I wanted to hear is that this food is not good to eat. Like I will make, I'm like I said, I'm greedy. I will make excuses for the food before I not eat the, before I don't eat the food. And seeing it on the website though really opened my eyes, and hopefully I can open someone else's eyes. I'm just, you know, what I mean, I'm just an ex drug dealer from the street, so I don't really have. The connects. I don't know who I'm supposed to talk to. I don't know the direction I'm supposed to go in to make any changes about any prison reform. But I'm hoping by me exposing it and talking about it that maybe the word gets to the right person, you know? So, if you have any questions, you have any comments, you have anything you want to say, anything you any anything about this show or any previous shows, you can leave me a comment on the channel or you can follow me on Instagram at wes.smith.129. You can DM me any comments or questions you have. I definitely will get back to you. Um, if you haven't by now, show me some love. Hit the subscribe button. And until next time, peace.